Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gooey's Dungeon Dive. It's the podcast where I rank every dungeon in The Legend of Zelda. And we have a very special episode today uh, as we're wrapping up The Legend of Zelda for the NES. Uh, today, uh, we're doing a different format here. I have a very special guest, my ZD pal, my good friend, and host of the Player Power Podcast, Corey Richmond. Hey, Corey. Hey. Woohoo. How- What's going on? <laughs> uh not not much how you doing i'm good i'm excited to be here to talk some yeah talk some og legend of zelda yeah i was um so yeah i've been posting these and it's been fun because there's been some people following along and stuff and i wanted to have you on because you've i think you've posted the most in-depth takes you Mm -hmm. and some other people have posted some really good takes and i've really liked your your uh perspective uh compared to mine and everything i like your points you're making so um yeah thanks for first of all thanks for following along with me yeah of course that's why i appreciate this series so much because it, it kind of gives me a reason to like go back and look at them you know in depth dungeon by dungeon and specifically with this game it you know it helped me analyze these dungeons a little bit more than i ever have before so that's cool yeah that's been my goal with this game for sure obviously there's like you know we're gonna get into later we'll be just talking about like you know how cool is the forest temple or whatever but yeah it's my goal here has been to more like what what do we like about these because people people usually just kind of sweep these dungeons under the rug when we're talking about our favorite zelda dungeons you know and i get i get that but i think there's some cool stuff here uh what what's been like your main main takeaway from this from your analysis Do, do you have any anything they were like oh i didn't you know i didn't think about this before or something of of the dungeons in this game in general yeah well one thing i kind of just before just thought of them as just labyrinths just room after room kind of sporadic not really any rhyme or reason but looking at some specific ones um like you know the snake the dragon even some others it's you can tell that there's a lot of dna of early zelda dungeon design in there like there's there are certain ones where you can tell that they wanted you to do it in a certain way and it's just interesting to see the very very early versions of that yeah you can when you take a look at it you can see that there's actually design going on here because i think yeah i think people do think like oh it's just like a bunch of rooms with enemies and 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 part of it is because it's understandable because it's like there are things that are like you wouldn't see in a future Zelda game, like a dungeon that you could go into with no keys and then potentially lock yourself out, you know, even yeah. even though that's unlikely or like the game doesn't work dungeon to dungeon with the keys. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, there are there are just trickier things that they kind of boil down into a formula later in a in a in a good way. Yeah, too. so not definitely. Yeah. But yeah, so that I actually had an idea for a Hyrule compendium that I think is just going to be this episode, <laughs> this part of this episode right here. But mm-hmm. I wanted to do like a Hyrule compendium that was like what wh- uh, were the like the clickbait th- like title would be like what the Legend of Zelda gave to us or something yeah, like that. Something like that. And it w- why, why the Legend <laughs> of Zelda dungeons are actually better than all the others. <laughs> oh wow yeah that's actually yeah the hate click something like i love that because yeah i was thinking like um you know the, it, it is very simplistic like i love you know in the videos where it's like oh this is the this is the first dungeon where there's like uh the secret passageway to the other side of the dungeon yeah. so it's you know it's before like we have like multi-levels or even 3d dungeons but we're already thinking about like oh if i go here then i'll end up here you know or it like is, you is. do have some sorry, sorry it, go ahead. it is interesting too because even in this game it's like it's kind of dependent dungeon to dungeon like you there's it's the dungeons in this game are a lot more diverse than i would have thought too because there are some where it's just kind of like okay you can go to a lot of different areas right from the start just kind of find your way to the end and then there are some other ones where it's a lot more intentionally designed to sort of funnel you into certain passages yeah yeah definitely and i yeah i love the yeah like the manji was one where i i felt like it had kind of different wings you go down yeah to discover different things and you know or 
or we even talked about um the the dungeon with the step ladder where it's like it you know it introduced the concept of like the item is now a key yep. you, yeah, you know it's you not need just the, the keys. item to progress in the dungeon yeah that's why i have that one so high on mine is because i thought that was so cool and it works really with the layout's really good and all that stuff so yeah um okay so one thing that i didn't mention in any of these videos uh though i've been talking about it to people behind the scenes i wanted to get your take on it is uh does the color of the dungeons play any factor in this you know i it could <laughs> it certainly could what something because, that i realized when i was setting up some of the some of the back some of the images stuff for this for you is that i thought more of the dungeons had their own kind of unique color and i was kind of bummed to realize that there are yeah. multiple that share the same color yeah i don't know if there's because if you look at the like i don't understand the technology of the time but if you look at like the map yeah they, of the they dungeons, all fit together and maybe there's like a color limit you know maybe it's something to do with like how you know how like Link's hair is pink and a link to the past oh, for yeah, like yeah, te yeah. techni like maybe there's some reason like they can't make a red dungeon because they have like the lava in there yeah. too uh, yeah i don't know i don't know um there's gotta but be yeah, something it's, it is a thing i, I think a uh, adventure of link they're all different colors so maybe that'll put them up higher we'll, we'll in see. the rankings we'll have to see that'll be the next step forward but yeah it, it was something because that's another thing when people people think about dungeons with these big themes and stuff like that and i i was admittedly stretching it a little bit with like talking about like the names of the dungeon and how like they're you know it almost makes like a little picture with the map that is i do like, think that's kind of cool though it is cool it, some of them look really cool like i i love like i i think the eagle is iconic you know yeah so i i i do think there is something to that but it is it is also admittedly kind of like lame when you get to level seven and it's like all right another green dungeon yeah <laughs> the third one you know very true when <laughs> one and two starts off with like two different shades of blue <laughs> and then it's like green there's a, there's multiple gray ones there's like two yellow ones or something it ends in two gray ones yeah. and then yeah the yellow is not a there's not an appealing color no i gotta it's say not. but okay okay so before we actually talk about death mountain um you know i've i've posted my my rankings in every bit video but since i brought you on for your perspective do you want to give me your pre death mountain rankings pre of all, right. all the dungeons pre death mountain rankings do you want do you want me to start from the bottom or start from the well, let's top let's start from the bottom start yeah. from the bottom all right eight there's so there's eight all right so number 8 yes. i had the moon level 2 okay number 7 i had the eagle level 1 Wow, so low for the eagle. <laughs> <laughs> number six, I had Manji, level three. Okay. Number five, I had the demon, level seven. Uh, okay, that, that, yeah. Number four, I had the lizard, level five. Number three, I had the dragon, level six. Number two, I had the snake, level four. And then my number one which is like your second to last is level eight, the lion, the lion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we both agree. The snake is high. Yeah. Is it for like, what do you, what do you think about the snake? The snake was, isn't that's the one where you get, um, the step ladder and you're yes. required that. That's why it's so interesting because that's it's so cool. That's one of the ones where it's like, it starts you off and it funnels you up to a certain point And you're like, okay, I know I need to go up, but I can't yet. And the only options to go, I think, to the right. And then yeah, you, once you, you, once you right. progress, that's when you get the stepladder and you're like, oh, now I can go back and cross that little that little water gap. And that's that's exactly the kind of, you know, later Zelda dungeon DNA that we see in this game where it's like you get the dungeon item and then, you know, you got to go back to this area so that you can progress. Totally. Yeah, that's why I liked it, too. Um, it totally like comparing it to other games. It totally is. It feels like it could be like a first dungeon that teaches you yeah. that concept. Yeah, for but, sure. Uh, I just thought it was so cool in this. And there's other reasons why it's cool with the enemies and the boss and all that. But that is yep. the standout thing. And then you had okay, so you had the lion at number one. I did. Um, what's yeah? What's your take on the lion? Because we you just 
we didn't talk much about it yet because my as of recording this the video just came out so the lion i actually i feel like it has such a great balance of kind of a lot of this stuff because it's it's segmented in certain ways that i feel like level five and maybe even like level seven are where it's like you you need to get to a certain staircase so that you can access like the later chunk of the dungeon and that has mm-hmm. like a, a a sequence of rooms that leads you to the boss but another thing about the lion that i loved is that i feel like these are two of the best items at least for me in the game i think the magical key is incredibly useful and yes. the um, yeah definitely the the book that turns the magic rod it it makes it shoot flames that's one of my favorite items to use in the whole game yeah i like i like that um as an upgrade to the rod because i love using the rod yeah and that's kind of a minor thing but it's like okay now i can just like always have it on and not have to like light up rooms or anything yeah, like exactly. that you know and it's, it's really useful for combat too yeah i feel like it's it's um yeah, it it really is actually because you can leave the fire down. I I feel like it's sort of a half, you know, like new cool item. Like, yeah, but then you also have yeah. the key, so I I feel like they they you almost get like yeah double bonus there, so it works. And then the it's there's there's like a whopping five mini bosses or something. There's like th- it's true. There's yeah. like three manhandlers and two gomas. And then the Goma upgrade is awesome yeah. too. And then the boss, I love the four-headed Gliok. That's I'm not big on the Gliok cuz I just cuz I don't find it much harder. But oh, I do love I do. Gliok the that boss. That was that was something oh, I fair enough. I find level 8 to be a pretty a pretty big jump not just in combat because the combat's not too bad, but there is a pretty big diversity of enemies. It's got like a bunch of poles voices it's got multiple different kinds of dark nuts and stuff, but even just in terms of the uh, the exploration, in the beginning it kind of boxes you off into a certain area where you're like you're you're forced to bomb a wall. Mm-hmm. That it doesn't really point to you why, but it, there's only a set few number of walls that it could be and it kind of makes you think it's really not many actually um it's there's yeah because there's like five i can't i'm trying to remember there's like four rooms or something but you know you're at the bottom so you can't bomb the bottom walls right and naturally the one that it is is the one room that's above all the other ones on the map so Mm -hmm. at least to me that makes sense where i think you would likely try like the farthest left wall in the farthest left room and then like the top wall of the top room at least that's what i would have tried but i just like that it makes you think about like okay you're in this dungeon you've done all that you can do what now yes i i agree i actually because yeah i went pretty hard on it, we can like kind of go through my list real quick but i had eight and seven at the bottom yeah because of all the bomb walls and i I felt like compared to other dungeons where like I felt like the the hints were pretty good that these were more cryptic. Yeah. Um but but like that's not necessarily bad. But um but then looking back at it there's actually like you know you get bombs in a room like why not try bombing there? Yeah. Um well even you know I think on top of that it's just you you got to think that you this is level 8. You've gone through seven dungeons at this point, and you know that bombable walls exist in this game. I just feel like for the place that it's at in the game, it's mm-hmm. it's not, you know, I don't think it's egregious to assume that the player might try and bomb some walls. Maybe if you went to level eight first, that would be too cryptic <laughs> or something, but... Well, I, I do agree. I do agree, and my only... Um, I'm not going to move them really on my list. Like I, I did regret it. Like, uh, maybe I put the moon down below, mm-hmm. you know, below those. Um, cause I do, I do genuinely like the other ones anyway. Cause these, these have that, but then they also didn't have like new bosses or enemies. So I was kind of like, sure. they did have the upgraded ones, So that was cool. So I'm kind of mixed on them still compared to the other ones. Yeah. But, um, I will say as like a counter with the bomb thing, uh, and we'll like, we'll mention it, but like in death mountain, uh like there are a lot of bomb spots but i feel like the hints for them are actually like really cool and i felt like because i played through all these without um 
a guide. And level nine, I actually felt like pretty clever when I when, yeah, figured when out find a lot of out. these. Except for one of except for one of them, but uh, it's a funny one, so I like it. Um, but anyway, so I had those at the bottom. But uh, there, I will say there are, there isn't a dungeon I've disliked in this. No, they're yet. all they're all pretty good, which is a good sign for the series because I think you do kind of jump to the conclusion that maybe du- the dungeons will get better in Zelda as they evolve. But uh, who knows? But I I think this is all pretty solid. So yeah, it's all good you know, so got- far. No no stinkers yet. I've got Demon and Lion at the bottom as ones I was kind of mixed on. And then um, then I had the Moon and then the Dragon, which I was, you know, I was like, these are pretty good. Not my favorites. And then I think going up are all, my top five or top four are like ones I all were like, heck yeah, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. So I had the, the Manji at four, you know, with its wings and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had the the eagle which i think is a great for this type of game it's a great intro i love the intro dungeons you know that of course <laughs> uh, then i had the lizard and the snake up top and my my view of this game was actually that like you know the dungeons were like getting cool and progressing things and you know introducing all these new enemies and then i feel like it kind of peaked a little bit and then the last couple are just like here's some more of that but on like hard mode you know but it was okay. it wasn't necessarily giving me new stuff even sure i mean this this is all the way back to the beginning but even with some of the items you know it's like they're cool actually because I, lo- I love all the combat focused items in this but it wasn't like you know it wasn't as cool as when you like first get yeah. some of these things yeah but it's still it's still good now we can uh we can get into death mountain itself um so the way the way we usually start these actually is talking about uh the actual getting to the dungeons because uh it's very important in this game and a lot of them uh have a carryover like they'll have a like this one for instance uh in level eight you get a you get that cool hint from the old man which i think would also help a level eight ranking i think because it's such a it's one of the best old man you know quotes where he says like uh spectacle rock is an entrance yeah. to death or something that's a cool one um so yeah this is one of the coolest entrances too because it's like up in the mountains uh there's it's just uh lionel after lionel to get to it you know and you gotta get to spectacle rock and uh bo- you know bomb one of the one of the what whatever one of the rock faces there and go in and then like boom you're, <laughs> you're in a well you don't know at the time but you're in this like giant skull yeah. <laughs> just so sick when skull. you get the map it's it's a great moment this is also has uh this also has a lot of old old men <laughs> in the dungeon itself lots of old men um do you, do you know about the like one that's right there at the entrance what's you probably you probably didn't encounter it cuz if you just go through the game like normal um he's he, he's, he's not, not there, there right yeah because you can go there early because all you got to do is bomb the wall yeah and basically there's an old man like right uh, in the one room it's oh, like a, okay. you know with and... the black with the torches and he won't let you in he says like you need the triforce oh gotcha uh, which is kind of cool <laughs> he's, a ga- like, he's the I... gatekeeper <laughs> he, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly cool. i i love that about this game though that they thought like you know you can like it's not an accidental thing, you know, the openness yeah. of this game. So right like right away that's cool. I, it would be cool if you got like to see him if you did get the stuff and like watch him like disappear, or, like get a cool line of text or something. Yeah. But what you know, what, what can you do? That's all right. Yeah, I thought this would I think Death Mountain is the uh the toughest dungeon in the game. Would you agree? Yeah, I think easily <laughs> easily the toughest one. It's it's ginormous. Yeah. Yeah, I think if level eight was bigger, you know, you could say that's pretty tough too. But yeah, I guess level eight didn't have. Well, I we'll talk about the size first because that's the obvious, mm. you know, the obvious thing that makes it hard. Because even no matter what enemies there are, you know, you can just have your health whittled away. Oh yeah, you know, Big time. I mean, there are enemies in here that will kill you, but the size and the navigation through this giant skull is itself. Um, quite difficult and there you know there's a ton of uh the passages that take you to different parts of the dungeons yeah there's a bunch of them 
it's it was fun though it was satisfying like i got a bit of a whiff of um playing you know the later 2d games where you like really have to keep that like mental map in your head of where have you been yeah definitely um, so, I, that's, yeah i got that feeling there. that's why I, I think this this dungeon is probably one of the ones that makes the most use of having the actual map and compass because that's something that in future Zelda games they kind of they they almost become trivial where it's like oh I don't really need the compass or the map and this it's you're going to want the compass and the map you got to know where you're going you got to yeah. know where you came from you know the compass in this game kind of sucks but it's still yeah. like extremely useful to get that one hint for where the boss is yeah you know? well yeah exactly at least to know <laughs> generally okay i need to be heading in this direction however I yeah because there's there. there's times in dungeons where it's like oh maybe i should try bombing this way because like the boss is that way so it you know it, it can work as like a bomb hint is in a way yeah so this is where i can talk about the bomb locations i think there's lots of cool ones here um like when you first enter you can kind of do like a loop around and mm -hmm. get nowhere you know because you're gonna have to bomb this one spot but it's like to me, it's like a good one because it again requires you to look at your map and go, "Oh, there's like this one square right in the middle." That is really cool. Like, let's let's try getting in there. You know, it's it's and it's not like a hinted at you, but like it you know requires you to like check the map, which I, it's that's a lost art in Zelda right there. Yeah, exactly. And then there's a lot of other ones where you go down, you know, room after room of like enemies, and it's like okay i'm headed to something you know like I, i'm gonna get something cool and then you just pop up in a dead end room it's yeah. very conspicuous and it's you like know? all right i gotta i need to be able to progress somehow this yeah so to me that like screams like bomb here you know yep um so yeah i i, I like that one there's one that's kind of it's kind of cryptic but it's non-essential i think it leads you to like a path where you get the map and the red the red ring mm -hmm. um but yeah, it's not it's not as like blatantly obvious. And actually, in this playthrough, I didn't even get it because I just like wound up at some point fighting Ganon. And I was like, OK, <laughs> I guess I'm just going to do this now, you know, but, um, you know, that's where the yeah, that's where the map really comes in handy for this one, because at least for me, it when I I remember one of the first times I played this dungeon without a walkthrough, I was kind of just like, I know there are so many rooms and I don't want to start going down a path and just get myself lost. So I kind of wanted to fit my, my instinct was, okay, I have the map. Let me just fill it out. Let me just go and visit yeah. all these rooms one by one. And if I got to a section where I knew that there was a room next to me and there wasn't a door, I was like, I might as well try bombing it. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a skill you... If you like really want to learn, you can learn in this game and it makes it much more enjoyable. Like I think the I, I do recommend usually to people to like use a walkthrough for the game yeah. on their first try and they're like, I don't wanna and then <laughs> but then they're like, I hate the game and I'm like, Well, just use a, use a walkthrough. But um I think if you do go into it knowing honestly, <laughs> as I've been putting this together, I've been using clips from the manual and you know, the manual it encourages this type of play like of like you know check the walls uh and they even provide you like with a, I, like examples on how to like create your own map you know because yeah. you want to look at the map but you remember it better to, if you create your own and yeah i don't know it, i think it actually does teach you good like navigational skills you know this, <laughs> like this, just what you're saying this game came out in a in a different era of video games when that was a lot more <laughs> common doing your own little Side notes, I, I, I assume many people that played this game when it first came out were doing just that. They were writing down physical notes or physical visual, visual representations of how some of these dungeons were laid out or how the overworld was laid out. And this is definitely a dungeon that leans very heavily into that. Yes. Okay, so back on with the, the bomb spots, there's the one I wanted to mention that i didn't feel as smart which is uh another old man room where he just shows up and he says like go to the next room <laughs> yeah. yeah oh yeah <laughs> and go, you just gotta go bomb to the, next the wall room. go <laughs> yeah so i mean i guess for a game like this it's like what does that mean but it's like oh i 
literally just that's interesting another room. they could have just put anything else there uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> she's just been like this room is weird don't you think yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what you know or like whatever. or like I, hmm, I think i hear something through the walls or something like that yeah no nah, just yeah, go to the yeah. next room yeah that's that's what's interesting about these is sometimes they talk in like They'll they'll say like a cool riddle that's also a hint, and it's like wow that's sick. Yeah, like you know the to get into this or like there are secrets where fairies don't live. Yeah, but that's, then that's my sometimes favorite. they're just like go talk to the woman, <laughs> and then other but then other times they're like tenth enemy has the bomb, and I'm like I can't tell if this is a riddle or like yeah what that means. It's a it's a wide variety definitely is i guess there's probably translation issues there too no i just i just blame <laughs> the old men some of them are just smarter than others yeah some of them uh, like to have a little bit more fun yeah. for sure <laughs> yeah okay so we can talk about the that great item from level eight that magic key because um you know i said in the last video like like oh yeah it helps out it helps out a little bit you know you like you're gonna want it because it's going to be much more challenging without it. But I, I think I really undersold that because yeah. I realized there, there's only four keys in the dungeon itself. Yeah, you kind of need it for this dungeon. There's like 16 locked doors, I think. Yeah. Um, this is That's something I'm, about this dungeon that, like, maybe we'll get into it a little bit after, but I feel like there's you kind there's kind of some prerequisites to this. Like, I would not recommend going into this dungeon unless you have the upgraded the highest upgraded sword and if you have right. the most bombs possible and you have the magical key because oh, otherwise you're gonna have a really rough time yes but that's that's kind of what i like about it and i think all of those things you mentioned it's it's a little bit different than earlier on when it's like you're like wow i could really use some help uh but like the heart the heart pieces are so or heart containers are so cryptic you know whereas like at this point even if you didn't get those i'm pretty sure you can get with all the heart containers you get from dungeons you can get all the swords um yeah you know you you can find all the bomb upgrades in the dungeons you go to and you can get the key in the last dungeon so it's like stuff that you know you would naturally hopefully get you could obviously miss it but you know it's even though you have those prerequisites, I think that it's, you know, it's not unreasonable to assume to say. that. Like, I wouldn't hold it against it. the dungeon. Yeah. And I, I like that you can actually make it harder for yourself, too. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Uh, and in fact, when I usually play through this, like, I wouldn't call it a speedrun or whatever, but I don't usually get the magic key because uh, you keys aren't really actually a problem in this game. Um, because you stumble upon so many in all the other dungeons, yeah. Um, and that it's yeah, it's pretty likely you're coming here with extras. But uh, you know, even in that case, you could probably spend all of them. But yeah, it probably just depends um, on like the style of play that you're going for. Because if you're trying to do that thing where you're going through dungeons and you're like, all right, let me go to every room, you're going to be spending a lot of keys. Mm -hmm. You know, the, in the beginning though, they do load you up, and yeah, I, that's I played true. this. My playthrough of this was like casual, like I just kind of like my my rankings here were um sort of based on like my my opinion, but also looking at it like okay, if I'm coming in here not knowing anything, yeah. what would it be like sort of thing, which is sort of why I had like for example, I had like the demon so low, even though when at Zelda Dungeon we did our top we did our top twenty dungeons. It was like one that I considered throwing on really? just because I loved just because I really loved uh, Grumble Grumble. Grumble, the yeah, Grumble gr That's one where I'm like, I'm still conflicted on whether or not that was a good, <laughs> good puzzle. It's not actually because, <laughs> um, yeah, it's like he's hungry, I guess. Yeah, and right. you have to find this secret shop to like buy that's, the meat. That's to. completely banking off of the assumption that the player found that shop recognize well, actually, that as meat oh there, you can there's buy a the hint, meat right? elsewhere oh really can, no there's no hint but you can buy the meat at other shops i think but it's more expensive but the, oh, okay. i think but yeah you're right you're right it's like you have to know he's hungry you have to have like bought meat for some i guess you would probably if you were playing it 
for the first time, like, why wouldn't you just buy the meat? Yeah, if you had the rupees. <laughs> yeah, which I guess that's another story, though. So anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the only four keys thing, that's uh, that's pretty rough. Mm-hmm. But um, okay, so it's not just the size, though. There's a ton of, like, tough enemies in this dungeon, you know. The, like, it's got the same thing as, like, level six, where there's just, like, a buttload of blue riz robes. Um, yeah. And they mess me up. I I found better ways to fight them in certain rooms where you can kind of cheat the system a little bit. But like, yeah, if you're like, I there were plenty of paths I was going down where I, I knew like, I don't really have to be here, but I, I just want to check it out. Yeah. And so I was taking more damage this time. But yeah, they're 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 tough. Always. They are. They're very tough. I'm, I, I'm looking at one room right now that's got like six <laughs> blue whiz robes. That's yeah, nuts. Yeah, That's and crazy. it's like room after room. And they love, they're, they're like perverts like this, so they like to throw the like-likes in there too. Yep. So, so like, they want you to lose your shield, which I never did. I was, I was very good That's in this. That's good. That is good. <laughs> you know, I'm replaying each one as I go, and I died in this twice, I think. Um, I'm not sure, to be fair, I'm not sure I've ever gone through this dungeon without dying at least once. I can I can do it if I know if I'm doing my run and I know yeah. exactly where I'm going. Uh, but even then, I've there's plenty you can find plenty of footage of me dying and completely getting stalemated yeah. by the game. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, in this one, I died the first. I had a potion, but I was like, I know you know I'm still just in the exploring part and I'm not too far in, so I'm not going to use it. Mm-hmm. So then I healed up, came back. Um. I don't know. I don't know how many times I died, but I definitely used that potion also. So. Yep. It's really tough. That leads into a little bit the uh, one of the items of this dungeon, the red ring. I think that's yes. fantastic. I love that. Yes, which I again I didn't get it this time, and really? I still beat it. So I think that's a testament to this game that it's like you know it was just like a little bit harder, but mm-hmm. I could still I could still do it. I'm not in, I'm not amazing at this game, but yeah, obviously getting the red ring is awesome. Like, and you should get it probably if you're playing for the first time, right? Yeah. And that's something that pops up in some later games too, where it's like you get, I think maybe it's just in like a link to the past and a link between worlds where you get the red mail in the final dungeon. But that is something that pops up later in the series. Yeah, it's a good, I mean, wouldn't you say that's that's a pretty good final item, right? Yeah, definitely. Especially if you You get it, especially if you, if you either stumble upon it or just happen to explore up that way first before you do the other half of the dungeon, then you get that armor upgrade and it's like, all right, I'm ready to go. You know? Yeah. It is a bit of a, like I said, you can miss it. Yeah. Uh, Cause you have to bomb a wall and it is kind of a tangent, but that makes it even more rewarding. I would say. Yeah. It, it reminds me too of in, in Ocarina of time, you can get the gauntlets and then go out to where that yep. fairy fountain is and yeah. double your health though. Not as, not as useful as this this is probably the most useful case of it i would say yeah definitely we talked about all you know the whiz robes and stuff but we also have new enemies which to me was like immediately you know it's exciting because i was just kind of lamenting the fact that the past couple dungeons were just like a greatest hits yep and this still was but this gave us a kind of a variety of new enemies still Mm -hmm. you had like two different types of land molas. I love that they like held off on, on putting these in at all, you know? Yeah, that is, that is interesting. That's an interesting choice. There's like the, your typical, the, I think the red ones are the normal ones. Yeah, and then and the, then blue, the blue, ones blue ones are going nuts. <laughs> yeah. They're just freaking out. Yeah. Um, They're scary. Yeah, they you enter the room vibes. and you're just like, Oh no, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is actually a great, it makes a great case for that wand with the fire. Yeah. Like you're saying, because you just drop that fire down and they, they can kind of like run into it a bunch and mm-hmm. kill a lot of them right away. Uh, yeah, great. I just love that. The new, having new enemies, because you also have three Patra, yeah. which are also new. Good old Patra. So it's like, yeah, multiple types of different types of enemies. Um, you like the Patra, the Patra battle? I do. I do like Patra. <laughs> Patra's a mini boss, right? I guess yeah, I would say. And that's, I don't that's know another, the that's one are. of the, uh, one of the old man hints in here is that he's like, Hey, Patra has the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Except, except I, I, again, I don't think I got the map this time around, and I killed, like, two Patra. So that yeah. tells you, like, how many Patra there are. Yeah, they, are they, they held off on putting Patra in at all until the end, and then they gave you three. It also, weirdly, because, like, I mean, you can read the manual, and it's got some enemy names in it, but it also kind of, like, teaches you what a Patra is. Because yep. <laughs> you're like, what the hell? Who the yeah. hell is Patra? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just another uh, crazy old man. Patra kind of acts as uh, Ganon's gatekeeper, too. Patra, the room right before the Ganon oh, fight. Oh, I like you that. Got a, you got a Patra just hanging there waiting for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great to think about. Yeah, there's a couple of Patra rooms where you come in and you're like, I'm just going to go down right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll just get out of here, man. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, and Patra is really kicks into, I mean, we've had some in this done in this game already, but just kicks into full gear the, like, eye, the Zelda boss <laughs> eye thing. <Yeah. laughs> like, Dig Dogger wasn't enough. Now we got Patra. Uh, so we hit every old man except for there's another one. <laughs> what does he say? Oh, he says like the eyes of the skull has the secret, and I think you can find like the compass in one of the eyes. That's not a, that's not that good of a one. I guess that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I I always like those. Uh, I always like the kind of little secrets where it's like it looks like there's a missing space of the map, where it looks like. You know, it's the 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 eye of the lizard or whatever, and you yeah. you, you just naturally that's something that that's another gain skill where it's kind of like once you see that you start to recognize that pattern of like I bet there's something there. Yeah, I like how they started off earlier in um was it level is it is it the lizard I can't remember actually so now but it's, it's one like, of those it's one with it's just a bunch of rupees and you don't have to go in there yeah um but it's like a good you know it's a good way to like introduce that idea to you mm -hmm. though i think it didn't really require the old man hint but i also say like why not why not have another old man it doesn't bother me with all that then you also have the last i guess item you get which is the silver arrow mm -hmm. which you you need for the final fight um it's it's a cool concept i guess it kind of like sucks if you get there without them yeah that's that's something i was just thinking there's nothing that really tells you you need them right yeah no i don't think so yeah i guess not or maybe is there is there like something in the manual that, or anything that might be in the manual yeah. yeah hold on that might be something impa tells you okay <laughs> which I, of ha course. I have that uh i have that image right here yeah um no i don't think so <laughs> but there is that that is something is there what are the chances of you stumbling upon ganon before getting the arrows i think it's possible i i like i said i played it and this is one like all, most of the other dungeons i have like in my head now at this point like i know okay in the manji we got to go up then left get the item then go back to the right yeah fight the boss this one i just never memorized it's too big and complex yeah i always got to rely on my notes you know so i don't know i don't know i didn't i i got the arrows first by chance but um yeah i guess i don't know the likelihood it's kind of up in the corner but i do i do like that looking at the map it's like the way that you get the arrows it's it's just like a little chunk of two rooms and one of the rooms, the room on the bottom is where the staircase is, and you have to find the staircase from somewhere else, go there, and then go up one room, and that's where you find the arrow staircase. So I do like yeah. that it's kind of tucked away in the corner. I think that's pretty neat. And you would have to pass up that room and come back to go back to to go to Ganon, or to get him before Ganon. You know, like yeah. they're on the way if you're taking the path there yeah. and back. I think it, yeah, it depends. Like... I think there's a I think you mentioned it earlier with like there's a lot of conditions to this game where like you could just like totally screw things up and not realize it yeah. and then like have a bad time. But um I had a good I mean I had a good time. So I I I I guess it speaks to, you know, your individual playthrough maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um what do you think about what do you think about Ganon in this, the Ganon fight? It's the first one, so you got to give it props for that. <laughs> Um, it is very cool, like, when you come into the dark room and hold up the Triforce yeah. and the little music plays. That's something I so. feel like, I, f I feel like fighting him, I feel like if you 
even if you know how to play this game pretty well and you're not too you don't have a lot of problems with combat this is something that i feel like could trip up a lot of people that are just not quite expecting him to be you know invisible the whole time but but it, <laughs> it is, is it does feel random a little bit yeah that that is something though i do i like kind of trying to learn his pattern and predicting where he's going to be next because that makes each hit that much more satisfying to me yeah i do i'm usually just like oh the fireball came from there i'm taking a stab at it and eventually I, i'd get it right you know like yeah. you can you can kind of fake your way through this too it, it reminds me of like the opposite almost of like certain later ganon fights where they're like kind of uh they're kind of like super easy yeah <laughs> so it's it, it's it's like the opposite where like this is easy but in a like totally nonsense kind of way whereas like the later ones are super easy but then it's like you get the big like epic moment you know of fighting him and and all that stuff and and when you kill him you know he turns to ash and he stuff. explodes yeah so i i like that but yeah the fight it's not my favorite boss fight in the game or anything uh-huh. but it's a cool moment and it's a new fight i guess and you, you get all the other new enemies in there so it kind of balances it out I like I like the room that he's in too. He's got a nice little unique boss fight room. A skull on the floor, yeah. right? Which is skull and he loves skulls. Ganon loves skulls. He's a skull yeah. guy. He's definitely he's one of those guys who goes to like and collects like the weird like 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 animal bones and like oh look <laughs> yeah. I got, I got like a a human eyeball yeah. in a jar like yeah that's totally that's him. this Ganon. <laughs> you know what I just realized too. Uh, didn't mention this should have been like one of the first things we mentioned when talking about the look of this dungeon but it's the first dungeon that has original music compared oh, to yeah. all the other dungeons very true uh yeah and it's awesome it's i mean i love the classic dungeon theme and all but like it's it is cool when you get here and it it's pretty effective because it's such a it's kind of an unsettling it is track. it really is it's been in, it's been in my head actually for a little bit i just subconsciously i've been humming it in my head wow <laughs> yeah kind i kind of like picture it i like i picture the dungeon when i hear that music yep, and then definitely yeah i think of patras and stuff like that so it's worth mentioning and i think that's that's like a big boost to it in rankings so so then yeah you beat ganon and you go into the room you you save zelda so that's kind of cool but Zelda's just like there in the dungeon yeah, behind the, just the fire, out. you know, just hanging out. And then, you know, roll credits. So the game's over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, what do you what do you think? Wh- where would you put this on your list that you gave us? On my ranking, I'm trying to it's towards the top. The thing that's kind of holding me back from just throwing this right at number one is I do feel like. At least for a an unseasoned player, I feel like there's just kind of an element of almost not randomness, but it's easy to get lost and I could see someone going in there and getting hopelessly confused. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's something where I feel like once you get through it, maybe even once or twice... Then when you go into it kind of knowing what to expect a little bit more, it gets a lot better, especially when, Mm -hmm. when, you know, if you know, okay, I'm going to need to be bombing some walls. I'm going to need to get that red ring that makes it better. But as of right now, I think I'm either going to put it right at number one or at number two below the lion. Oh yeah. See, I, I'm struggling with the the same thing too, right? I just, for all, like, I think it's, it's exactly difficult as like a dungeon at that point should be but you know obviously there's the caveats of like where it could be a little confusing and yeah and stuff like that but i i like i did like i don't know i liked all the like the like bomb puzzles or whatever you want to call them i love the new enemies pretty pretty well thought out you know i I think new music that's true the unique music you know i think I think I am going to pull the trigger and put it at number one. The main reason that made me want to do that is just, this is, it really sets the bar for final dungeons moving forward for the whole series. This is, this is really what I would want in a final dungeon. It's blisteringly difficult. And I, I really like that 
when the final dungeon of a game is just a true test of your abilities. And I like that this dungeon kind of set that precedent for final dungeons moving forward. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think if you got through, like, the last couple dungeons, like, all the things you're talking about that could trip you up. Like, I think you're committed at this point if you get to level 9. Yeah. And so I think all of those challenges... Not to everyone. I'm sure some people are just like, oh, gosh, I'm following a walkthrough just beating this game because I feel like I have to. Which maybe at the, that point, though, this game's not for them. Yeah, I think all the things that I said I liked about what this game introduces, except, you know, it, it's missing some of that stuff. But overall, it's all here. And it is, yeah, that final test. So I, on my list, it's definitely number one also. Plus, you got the new music, you know. That's great. It inter- it's the first dungeon with different music. What yeah, that's pretty what awesome. <laughs> first, the first um, dungeon ever in a Zelda game with a unique dungeon theme. Exactly. It's sadly the gray color, but I guess you know you're you're in like a skull, so it, it it's it's fitting. Know. It's okay. It's fitting for the for the final dungeon. I think <laughs> I'm not gonna start throwing colors into the mix yeah. at this point. Though I wish it were purple, but. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, Corey, uh, thanks. This has been fun talking to you about this. Um, you know, I was excited to have you on here. Um, you know, maybe you can uh, come back sometime. We're going to be doing some future games. We're going to be moving on to Adventure of Link next. Woo-hoo. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, without without thinking about it too hard, just like looking at your list it, and, you know, you, and you haven't reviewed it yet. Like, where would you throw Parappa Palace? <laughs> uh pretty low (laughs) okay okay i I, I, who knows maybe i'll have some sudden realization almost like i did with the dungeons of this game where i'm like you know what this is actually a lot more well thought out than i thought but uh yeah the dungeons of zelda 2 are not that game's strong suit in my opinion yeah i'm worried it's gonna be hindered by like i I actually like the layouts and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. my immediate thought is god you got those guys running at you constantly yeah that's that's so annoying (laughs) but uh we'll we'll worry about that when we get there so um but yeah thank you so much for for coming on definitely Uh, thanks for having me yeah do you you want to plug anything sure uh as gooey said before i am the co-host of the player power podcast find us on buzzsprout or basically wherever you listen to podcasts so apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, stitcher tune in all of that stuff and uh follow us on twitter at player power pod nice nice all right well yeah so that's gonna do it that was the uh the season finale of gooey's dungeon dive um yeah, thanks to everyone for who's been following along, and we'll see you at Adventure of Link. <laughs>